Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Espan from CZT Midori Furuhashi. Okay. Hope you're sitting down. <laughs> this one's a little, you know what? It's a little tricky, but it's actually very doable and very forgiving. So I will, I will talk us through it. Okay. Starts off with four C-shaped curve lines in the center of wherever you want it. Now this, <laughs> if you look at my version of the step outs, you will see various iterations <laughs> of, <laughs> of the C-shape because I kept trying different things. Or, and or I should say, um, Sometimes it just was however it turned out. All right, so, and I think I like the one I did biggest the best in uh, step eight there. So let's try that. All right, so I'm just going to start here. Okay, I said towards the center. There's going to be the center. So a nice C shape. This is one of those, just don't think about it. I like to go north, north, south first. Okay, it's apparently, it's going to be, it's going to be off center. It's all good. And, and yeah, this was one way that it was happening where one side was, um, they're all just different shapes and it's okay. I'm here to tell you that we will see. Yeah, you, you it, it, it'll all be fine. It's good. Okay. Next in the center of each of these C shapes, I'm going to do two lines, not too far out. So just a little bit above this, because what we're going to do is we're going to be fitting two lines here. Maybe this, maybe a tad longer. And one thing to note is we can, you know, carefully make them a little bit longer. We can put extensions on them if we need to. <laughs> I try to not have that happen, but this is one of those where, you know, we need to do things as best we can, but know that if it doesn't line up exactly, we can make it work after the fact. Okay, so once you have all of these lines, which that kind of looks cool just the way it is, right? Then we're going to more C shapes. And this one, what I decided is I'm not worrying about what I'm not worrying about the shape that's going to happen. That helps. Number one, just it's like, oh, like the way Zentangle is, has, was designed, we'll say. Because if you read Rick and Maria's uh, materials, that's one of the things about Zentangle. It's like, follow the steps and then be surprised at the results. Oh, and so this is for sure going to be one of those. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm starting here. So I'm thinking, okay, like I kind of air draw, right? I, I see where the curve's going to be. So I make it like that. And like I said, if you end up not touching, that's fine. You just don't want to have uh, these C shapes, the first C shapes, too big or too long. So that way, you know, you want to go over it. But you know what? If that's the case, we just, whatever the first one or the longest one is, let's start there and, and start your shapes. Okay. And then oh, we'll do two. It helps to do it two in a row like that. All right. And then thinking halibau. Because we're, we're, we're going to go how about this line underneath this, this set here and come on the other side. You know, my like my pinky is, is hitting onto my nail. I'm like, oh, it's going to make it turn weird. It's all right. It, it, it worked. Okay. And then same thing here. So, you know, this is going to have to be a little bit, wow, a little bit higher, but because I'm putting that line there, well, okay. That one went a little bit weird, but that's okay. We like weird. Okay. Pen, the pen sometimes, oh, just has a mind of its own. All right. And then, you know, again, picturing where that's going to line up here. I didn't worry about it. I, I'm making more, uh, it's more of a square, uh, you know, a rounded square than anything else, isn't it? But it's okay. And the last one. Now the last one, you just want to be careful because we want to kind of meet it up over here. So 
like that. And if you just go slow enough, it works. Especially, you know, as you're coming to wherever you want to have it line up. And the beautiful thing is that if it's not perfect, it's still okay. And then here, so like here, I've got these lines here that, you know, didn't quite meet up. And that's, like I said, it's all fine. Next step. Actually, you might even wait to, to line them up for this next step, which is, and again, we're going to hollow bow now under this little path. And you, I'll do it both ways. So you could start here. So here, hollow bowing. Oh, and we're going to come up and meet uh, that end. <laughs> You could so you could start here where it's hollow about or here on the end and come in and then that's there, that's where you could finish off that space if you needed to and so we're just going to follow it around i think i'm liking to come from this end because it sometimes the angle that it's at implies a little bit of the curve or something i don't whoops sorry um, I don't know if that makes any sense. See, like this one's kind of angled in a little bit. And so I'll make that so that way it looks like it's continuous. Like I meant it that way. This one is going to be way wider. Like so. And that looks rather neat as it is too. If I must, if I must say so myself. All right, next one. That's pretty much the intense, the intense uh, focus is pretty much all in right there. From here, and this is actually the last, the last step. And what I did, and this is, all of this is how we make it forgiving by, um, you know, coming around, not worrying about, oh, I want it to be a, a circle. That's why we don't say circle. <laughs> we say orb because circles too much pressure. Um, but you know, and just, you know, taking, it's a C shape curve line. That's all it is, you know, and taking it where it goes and then, you know, meeting things up that makes it forgiving. Um, hollow bowing this and not, again, not worrying about things being symmetrical or even those don't, don't, we have to work to get that out of our head, but you know, coming up from where this one, uh, ends continuing it up and around all of these pieces make it forgiving all right so the last piece is on uh this corner in between these i don't know whatever you want to call them they look i don't know what you call them there knots is what i'm thinking of but they're not really so in the middle so say like there we're going to do a bigger um kind of an aura but coming down c-shape curve line coming down in the middle, not all the way, just kind of stopping there and then continuing on, but then aim for the middle of the next section. So we're going middle, actually it's like this middle, dipping down to the middle, coming up and around to the middle. Like that. There we go. <laughs> and that is it. Except that, Jen, you can play with it and things like that. On, on my, well, actually, do take a look at the For More Inspiration link because there's a lot of amazing things that you could do. Um, one thing that I really did like is uh, putting an additional aura around the outside. It does kind of just tie it all in together. And then you could add, um, <clears throat> you could decorate it however you want. I like how um, uh, Midori added uh, some striping. Um, although it did it seem like she might have, maybe she added. So like here, maybe it was four lines and then two of them. Uh, she did striping and then because it seemed like the one was empty i'm not looking at it so I, i'm just going from my memory but you that all of those ways you can play with it however you want let me just show you some basic shading thoughts 
and um yeah all right here and here's the way i'm thinking about it um because we did a lot of hollow bowing so i'm th thinking i'm going to shade it the way i would the tangle hollow bow and so it is pretty much just in this center bit and i'm doing just one side at a time Actually, I don't really, I don't really need to. I want to keep these in there tight. And actually, because I'm gonna, well, let wait, let me just do, and then, then I will talk and think. <laughs> All right, we'll do the other side. And like here, you could just do uh, the over under. So that would be like just putting some graphite here and here. You could do that. It just depends on what, on how, how your, your uh, tangle is speaking to you. So there's that. This also, I mean, because you see those tuck in and then this is also, it's going down underneath here. So that's why I, I like to, that's why I added that in, uh, just going along that line because everything outside of that is kind of underneath it. That's my thought process. But then two, we have right here and gosh, you know, maybe we'll just do, just put a little bit right there where that's tucking in. I don't... Uh, I don't want to have the graphite remorse. That's what I'm, that's what I'm concerned about. Cause uh, you know, it's like kind of making the whole thing just gray in there. Okay. That works. The nice thing is, is we can always go and add more. All right. Then also all of this is underneath here. So when I do the how about tangle, Actually, I could do both sides like that. Um, I do, um, I shade on the outside of every straight line. So like this, well, this wouldn't be a straight line, but a continuous line. So I'm not obviously going over this, but then I'm going over this. And it kind of takes care of the over and unders as well as makes some nice shading. Um you know, like for a background type of thing. And then this one, I'm, I'm being careful to have the tip of my pencil and the tortillon on the line that I want to be at the point that I want it to be the darkest. Cause I don't want it to spread out too, too far. But I want to have that nice gradient at the same time. And that works. I like it. But you know, it it is needing something else. And so I think. Hmm. Well, maybe not shading per se. But I think some contrast would be very nice in this. Hmm. I was thinking, I like those stripes. Maybe I should do, well, now let's do something different. We'll put some shine on where these, where there's a, a corner, not a corner. What am I saying? Where it's rounding. Yeah, like that. So more of a fill in with, uh, with some shine. Okay. Um, and as I'm doing this, I mentioned the description section, please go there and take a look at, as I mentioned, the, for more inspiration, like the first link is my version of the step out. And then I put, uh, you know, from the uh, creator of the tangle. But do, do take a look. Now, my version, I, no, I think I pretty much, uh, 
No, I pretty much emulated what Midori did. I didn't have to. She split things up very nicely so you can really see what it is that uh, you need to do. Um, but do take a look. And just especially at Midori's for the ideas, for the, the ways to decorate, ways to use it, things like that. And so this would be, I'm, I'm picturing more of a, a feature. Although, you know what, you could do a bunch of them in, you know, in a row and make a border if you wanted to. But I see it more as a, like this is a centerpiece um, that you would uh, add tangles around. Um, or, you know, I guess it could be a little bit of an accent one too, where, you know, maybe you want to, you know, put it in a, a corner or something. I don't know. That's the fun. That's up to you. Yep, I'm liking that a whole lot. Okay. All right, what else do I want to mention? Oh, well, below that, I'll, I'll mention this now while I'm filling this in. Um, below those links to the step outs is my link tree. So if you enjoy my style, <laughs> Um, and would like to tangle with me online. I do teach classes Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thursdays are always free. It's called, uh, tangle time. And we have a lot of fun. This one I would reserve for tough tangle Tuesday though. Um, and tough tangle Tuesday is also a free class on a Tuesday. Hence the name. Oh, oh, it's a, okay. I guess it's okay. Um, it's on the third Tuesday of every month, barring any, all of it, barring any weird uh, schedule issues that I might have. Um, but that is the general, general dates. Let's see. I like to have these nice and jagged. It really helps make it, uh, give it that shiny look. So coming back with the 01, yeah, 2. To to jagify, <laughs> making up words. I like making up words and terms. Ah, it looks nice. Okay. Um. Yeah, super cool, super cool. I like it, and I hope that you have luck with it. Um, like I said, it's one of those that just takes a little bit of extra focus, and um. And once you once you kind of get get the flow of it, it's not as bad as what it seems. That's all I have to say. All right, I think that's it. One thing, other thing, I want to mention about the uh, the link tree um, and things to highlight besides classes. It has all my social media, you know, ways to connect with me, um, links for for shopping uh, and stuff like that. I do have some lists. I have a there's an Amazon. Um, I have an Amazon store there. I do get a little commission. So thank you for uh, using those links. And I have, I, I, it's a continual work in process. I, I, I'm still working on it, but, uh, trying to organize it into, you know, lists of things that we're always looking to, uh, you know, to play with. So, so take a peek. And then also if, uh, we have our Tangle Addicts community group on there and, um, it's on Facebook. And if you're interested, click the link. There are four questions for you to answer in order to gain entry. And then that's it. So, all right. This was fun. It was a lot of fun. All right. So I thank you so much for watching. And I wish you happy tangling.